Hi, welcome on the rooftop of the Gaisha Forum in Barcelona. I am Sandy Bruna, architect and founder of Inside Barcelona. We offer architecture tours in Barcelona and you can find us on social media. We are going to explore together the building of the old factory um, of the Gaisha Forum, which was transferred in a cultural center later. In the beginning of the 20th century, Casimir Casaramona decided to unify his three factories of textile production in one building on the foothills of the mountain Montjuic, which we, where we are located right now. These formerly were green lands. The city was far away, the city center of Barcelona. Now we find ourselves in the city center almost. There, it's located on the right next to the hills of the Montjuic, where 1929 the World Exhibition was held. And this building got a very important neighbor, which is the Miss van der Rohe Pavilion, just situated next to it, built by Miss van der Rohe as the German pavilion for the exhibition. But uh, when this factory was built, there was nothing around. Um, to build this project, um, the factory owner commissioned Butch Icadalfa, which is uh, one of the most important architects of the modernist movement of, in Catalonia, next to Gaudi, to build this factory. He wanted <clears throat> to have a very, very modern factory with very good working condition for his workers. That's why he planned to make a layout like a little village with many pavilions to be able to have a, a lot of light in all the working spaces. We see there are two towers. One is the clock tower we see right over there. And the other one marks the entrance of the factory. There is no chimney around because this was the first electrified factory in Barcelona. We can also see this separated pavilions to facilitate that a lot of light can come into the workspaces and they are separated by Alice, where we are going to meet for the next, um, uh, next time because now we switch to Basel and we're gonna find ourselves on the rooftop of um, the Vartec factory where my colleagues are waiting. Welcome in Basel. Thank you, Sandy, for giving me the voice. So um, we are here now in Basel in Switzerland. So we are on the rooftop of, of the Wartek. The Wartek is an old brewery. It was built in the end of the, as it was built in the, in the 30s, so of 2030s. So, and I make now a tour with you around Basel. So very important for Basel is the Rhine, the River Rhine, our, also our chemistry. So you see from the Wartek, from the Wartek, you see these two towers. They are built from Herzog und Dömeron, from the Roche Towers. They are now in the production side. And you see also when you go on the other side of the Rhine, so you have uh, very famous buildings, also uh, old industrial uh, paper fabric that is now the Museum of Conten Contemporary Art. And you have, when you go on, on the view, you see, you see also the Middle Age part of the city with the Münster, one of the oldest cathedral that you have, that you have here in Basel, as in, in, in uh, Switzerland. So, and so you see, we are in the middle of the, of the city. <laughs> of the city and the Wartek. The Wartek was in former times built here, surrounded. It was a, a place where there was the production of, uh, of, of beer. This was until, the, uh, until in the 90s, then the production of beer, they, they, uh, they, they stopped it. And so there was, a, there, was a other, there was a question what to do with the old industrial building. What can you do with it and how can you transform? In this time, so there was a group of young, 
of young people. They were thinking about how we can transform an industrial thing and the, and the architects were with us and they helped us to transform it. So now I show you, when you go here on, So follow me. So now we go up the stairs and, and you see this, uh, the building is very, very typical for a situation that was built in the end of the 90s with the, you have these castle-like buildings. And we go now down the stairs. You see, we have different kinds of terraces and we have different use. We have here in the house more than 40 projects. One project is a Druckwerk, so we print workshops. We have, um, we have wooden workshops. We have artist plays. We have exhibition plays. And like it is normal that in, in Switzerland, though we are a very federalistic system. So there is every project is responsible for themselves. So... And I think that's also perhaps another thing that we, that we will see in the Geisha, that here we have, uh, we have another constructing. So follow me, we go down. So we have here a terrace. It's also a terrace, a public space in some way, where also a lot of people can come uh, and use it. So that, uh, that was also idea to share this terrace with other peoples. So. I give now to Sandy to go on in, uh, in, uh, in Barcelona. Hello, we are back in the alleys of the factory in Barcelona. We now find ourselves like in a small village. We can see various pavilions. Let's walk around a little bit and explore these streets in this small urbanism. As the factory owner wanted that the working condition should be much better than in previous factories of the industrialization where they had very bad light and ventilation. He planned this with several pavilions where the production of the cotton factory was, was situated. In each pavilion there was a different process. We also see that there are some skylights to a uh, uh, floor downstairs. There they could throw down the cotton when it was delivered by this uh, porch right over there and light uh, went inside these storage spaces. We see that big windows open up to these pavilions where the workers were uh, working with the cotton to transfer it in textiles. We also see small bridges connecting the roof, so they had access to clean rooms and maintain rooms. Today, these pavilions are used for the various exhibition of contemporary and modern art of the cultural center. We see that the materials used to build this factory was brick and metal. The brick was used as structure, but it also was used in a very decorative way, which was new because in older time, brick was only a material then to be covered with plaster. We also discover details of a lot of metal work, which was very, very uh, special for the modernist um, Catalan style that the collaboration, the very close collaboration with the craftsmen 
who worked with glass, with ceramic, with metal, and with brick. Now we are going to discover the inside of one of these pavilions and the structure. And I will explain more about the renovation of this building. Here we can also discover the model of the factory. We recognize the different pavilions, the two towers we have seen from the rooftop. And when we walk around the factory, which we can fly like words right now with the model, we discover a big intervention, but underground. When this factory was in use as a textile factory, it was only for a few years. 1911 until 1919, when the owner died. Then the factory was closed and it was standing, um, it was no special use until the exhibition, the world exhibition, and then this factory was used as a warehouse. Then later on, the Franco regime used it as a police station and had the cavalry of the horses in these buildings. In this time, the building was destroyed a little bit. It was not maintained very well, and it suffered. So later on, the foundation of the Bank La Caixa bought the building and decided to um, install a cultural center in, in this space, and a renovation, very careful um, planned renovation was uh, taken out. We can see here on the ceiling that the old structure was maintained and the metal structure of the building as well and renovated very carefully. And then we also see that there are some modern escalators, uh, the entrance hall. I would like to go back to the model for a moment to explain the intervention, which was made by the Japanese architect Arata Isotsaki. He had been commissioned directly from the Kaisha Forum to um, renovate the building, but also to bring new space for the exhibition. And it was not allowed to add another volume on the factory because it was uh, protected, but uh, they needed about 60% more surface. So it was decided to build an underground entrance base as a patio, we see right here. And their light comes in the building and it opens up a whole new underground world which serves um, for the use of a cultural center. Now we are going to switch to our friends to Basel and later on discover this space. Thank you, Sandy, for giving me the, the voice. Uh, so now we are, we went down the stairs. So now we see, have another situation. We see on the building and also as Sandy was saying, here we have another kind of uh, brick constructing. So the house was built in the, in the 2030s. So they, the, that was very important for this time. Also, they were a little bit kind of a fake architecture because the brick are only a surface of a concrete construction. But also the construction here, you see with this, with this, with this uh, uh, rhythm and so on, it took a little bit in the direction that, that we saw also in, the, in, in Barcelona. So now let's go in because the war tech in the in in 2040 so we had the possibility to to build this old mold through uh, uh, rooms so this old mold part to to rooms so now i show you an inside view of this building come on with me
So we are now inside of one of the silos. You have to imagine that the silos were, there were four, there was, uh, there were, you see it here, that was a silo. It was a vertical through more than, for, to more than six floors. And so in the construction to renovate this house, but, uh, to, to make it a transformation from uh, an old industrial building to, uh, to, um, to a cultural place. So you see all this here, this was one of the silos. There were 12 silos vertically. So we had to dig out, out the, the concrete and uh, to make to, to concrete walls. And you see that it's nowadays, now that the project, and it's called Nachthafen. So that is a, 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 a artist community, a co collective. They give this room for people they are as a group here for 10 or for projects and so on. So you see there are some beds. The, 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 the renovation is very rough. So that's also that we, uh, so the, we, it, it was important for us that the constructed site, what you have here. This column where the place where the, where the, 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 the different differentials were. So what you also can see when you come here, and that's also very important for the history of the brewery, the Vartek. So you see on the other side, that's, uh, that's the, Ver the Ver it's the Dina and Dina building, the, the Werk, uh, the Vartek Hof. And that was important because it was only possible to transform this brewery also with the, with the, uh, with the support of the, art, the, the, the architects and also the Vartek Invest. So they give us in the, in the, in the 19, in 1993, the possibility to make here a cultural spot. So I think that was also, and you see also that it was possible that the, uh, this, uh, this Vartek, so this building, that is a correspondence between here a cultural space Living, uh, living spaces and also geschäfts, um, business places. So you have here three kinds of function, cultural, living, and so. And this thinking, so that, that this transforming of uh, area, of a state, as, as a city planning project was important for Basel. So we had also to vote about it. The Basel people had to vote uh, if, the, if we can change the, the city plan to another thing. So that's a little bit this, this, that has to do with the house and the city. And now we go to Barcelona. Hello to Cindy. Hi, back in Barcelona. Now we are going to discover the new part of the old factory, the museum. Let's go down to this side. And from the Greek world, we dive down to the white entrance hall. Now we discover the entrance patio, which was digged in into the ground to open up to the entrance hall, all in white, in the outside, uh, executed with white limestone. And we see that this space organizes, flooded by light, the entrance situation of the cultural center. 
And this was made possible by the engineer Robert Rufal, which together with the Japanese architect Arata Isotaki, um, holded up the whole old factory with micro pillars to, to implement this big open space without any pillars. So to use it um, also for events and to help all a big cultural center for workshops and exhibition spaces, an auditorium and much more space. With this addition in underground, we only see the entrance hall right now. The whole building added 60% of its surface. Now let's go out to the outside patio to discover this entrance situation. We see that this white light storm reflects the light and bring it into the entrance hall. This patio not only is a staircase, it's a space to be used for the cultural center also to, to help performances and exhibition and events. And Arata Izotsaki, of course, we see that he was a Japanese architect, but he was also inspired by the reference of the Miss Van der Rohe Pavilion right next door, which became an icon for the modern architecture of the 20th century because there, the, the Miss Van der Rohe, of course, was also very much inspired by the ideas of Japanese architecture. Um, Arata Isotsaki liked to take these ideas and bring it to this patio. And now we are going to discover one part of it which is very special and traditional in Japanese art. As a Japanese garden, but cultural, we find this secret garden here, a space of silence and only the sound of the water, which is filled on the ground. And when we look up, we see this white space in contrast with this brick factory, which of course was an idea to make an eye catcher and contrast with the old building. And there, and therefore um, show the, the brilliance of both, both material worlds. Let's see. Now we can walk, we can look back and see a sculptural tree over there. This marks the entrance of the building. It's a sculpture and it represents the tree like we find it in many villas, which stands in front of the house. Now we switch once more to Basel. Bye bye. Thank you, Sandy, for giving me the voice. So now we are, in the, we are again in the inside of the Bartek. And as you here see, we have here the, the founder of the Vartek, the brewery. And also we have here an art piece that shows that we get this house in 2002 as a, a, donation, a donation from the old Vartek Invest. And uh, now we go in, in the heart of the, of the building, in the suit, where, the, where they were, were doing the brewery and so on. And what you can see here, you see there were important plants. We have here. You see, you see here on the floor, 
the Bay PP, you are doing this for the Bergkrank uh, Tech Permanent Professorium. So you, you have to imagine that here there were huge kettles of, of, uh, of bronze where they were producing the beer. And also you see here very good the, the situation of this brewery, uh, brewery. When they built in the 13s, so it was important for them that beer is a symbolic for hygienic, for good, and also the, the, the azuleos, how you say in Spain, um, that, that this color was also uh, given to the, the place that it has to be good. Because beer was standing always for a kind of purity. And so you had out here in this room, this industrial room, how it functioned. The transforming started in the 1933, so we were transforming this room in a place where we have here a lot of concerts, we have weddings, we have theaters, and so on. And also a very typical situation, I think this is also as Sandy was showing you in Barcelona. So you have these uh, windows. And these windows, they show how the production was in this time. And you see also when it was built, it was built in 1933. And also the, so this, uh, the, the, the typo typography, and also the Sudhaus Valtek, Malt Silo, as you see here, is important that, the, that, the, that it was shown. So we protect this still but we use this house in another way. And when you see here, you have also these stairs. These stairs. So there were four, four cattle here downstairs, also four um, to the uh, brewery, and upstairs there were also. Also this, pro uh, this process of, of, of the beer was very important. Nowadays, we drink here beer, and uh, yes, as you see. So the the transformation in the vortex, there were two, phase, uh, there were two uh, etapes. One etap when you get the house in, 19, in 1993. So you had to do here heatings inside, you have to do uh, uh, new uh, windows inside. And the other thing, it, uh, it was one, and you see here there were some windows in front of the old windows. But the transformation and the the, the, uh, the renovation and the, the transformation of the whole is a totally other behavior because it is not uh, it was not in one in one step it was in different uh, in different steps. Important is also that the, that the, the that is not one owner so that's a foundation that we were we were constructing and the different project forty project in the house. They are also involved in this in this um, process. So we have a very democratic way to discuss and to get to the decisions. So let's go down and take a few also to these little details that you have here. This time related. So in the in Barcelona, you are in the in the in the in, we are here in the third twenty on the thirties. You see this in, in this this uh, celebration of uh, industrial of things. You see here in a lot of details, and also important for these details is that the transformation of the Vartec as a cultural space. Um, from an architectural point of view, want to keep this, this all these little, as all these details for themselves. So we go, we go now out.
also you can see the beautiful details of the and as you see so it is uh, it is it is not you know we didn't uh, restore it a lot but we tried to keep it in the way as it was in this time so now we go this is for the old entrance that we go now at and you have a very good view here also of the living place of the Mino, near the we have here the, 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 the shops, here the living, and here the parking space. And here also at the beginning a kind of piazza. And when you take a look up, then you see there yeah, very good. This is the this tour. This is the second tour that you see, and there is also a kind of um, um, a mark in Basel, in Basel that you see from everywhere. Here we stay from outside this uh, the building. And here you see the different kind of projects. They are here in the house. Now we follow. And also how it is situated in the city. So you have, you have, the, you have uh, new buildings, the renovated buildings. It's now the changement of an industrial place to a living place. It's changed in the last three years here a lot. And here you see all projects. They are here in the house. So you have handcraft, you have art and text, you have, uh, you have dance, theater, you have living as a project, and you have exhibition place as a project. So it's a very multi multicultural place and all the people there are all the projects that are involved they are also in, on the same for, uh, on the same level so we have to decide for the whole and, uh, so when you see, and you see here also that uh, we have here uh, places for the, for the bicycles and you see here again now the entrance to the house, if you compare it with, uh, with Barcelona, so you have a totally other behavior, how you print people in the house. So the transformation to make your sculptural, a very, very good scene thing, not to hide away, but to have a kind of accentuated um, sculpture, how you print together these this, this different levels, the different levels and functions. So the transformation inside the house is very subtle and a lot of rooms show still the archaeological part of you, how you transform it. And here you have these sculptural stairs that makes accessibility to the different levels of the house. So I think now we come, uh, we come to an end. And um, yes, I give, the, I give now the voice to, to Sam, Sandy. Back in Barcelona, to finish the tour, we walk out of the white entrance patio to the main street. Like the staircase um, on the Vartec factory, uh, this space contrasts a lot with the old brick building, as we see again in these views.
we stand just below this cultural tree which leads us into the building. But as we had the opportunity to land on the roof first today, as it is online, we can get out on the street, the reverse, as we do it <clears throat> on normal tours. Let's have a last look at the facade on the side of the building. You see the entrance tower, which in the former fa factory marked the entrance of the building. Now it changed to this facade because we are right next to the Miss van der Rohe pavilion on the other side of the street. From Barcelona, I say bye. It was fun with you. Bye bye. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you, Sandy. And bye bye from, from Basel and good, good health and have a good time. Thank you.